Is here we are going live talking about getting new clients there's a lot of things that come up in this group but one of the biggest things that keeps coming up is getting new clients so hopefully the audio and the video is working out here i'm going to just hang out for a second and make sure that all that's connecting we've had a little glitching going on with this video setup so if you're watching right now just let me know is the audio or the video skipping at all can you hear me straight up or is there any issues at all. I want to make sure I'm coming in clear. If I am glitching at all, I'll switch back to my iPhone. So I want to make sure this doesn't skip out. That happened uh, a time or two ago when we were doing these lives. And then we'll dive in on this training. If you're watching this later, you may want to skip ahead a few minutes. We'll make sure we're all set up. I think we're good. I can see it's glitching a little bit when I'm looking at it, but that could just be the lag time on the video. All right. I'm going to launch in here. Again, let me know if we start glitching at all. So new clients, that is a constant, constant question we're getting. How do you get new clients for your agency? So many agency owners have an amazing product or service. And if you're in this group, you probably do too. Probably the thing you do, your go-to skill set is not your problem. That's not what you're trying to figure out. You know how to do web design. You know how to do ad creation. You know how to do Facebook ads. You know how to do the things. Hey, what's up, David? David, hey, if, it, if it's glitching at all, anything like that, just let me know. If we're getting uh, cut out audio, anything like that, I want to know. We can correct it. Just make sure if you know what you do awesome, then do that awesome. That is not what this group is about. This group is about helping you find those new clients, build the systems team processes to execute on all the delivery you're gonna to have to have because the new client's coming in and build a sustainable practice model. What's up, Sean? Build a sustainable practice model that makes sure it gets done correctly and that you can shrink your time. I work less than about 30 minutes a day in my agency. Um, seems good to you. Thanks, David, appreciate that. I work less than about 30 minutes a day in my agency and that's simply because we've really honed in on that new client acquisition process and the systems and processes and people that go into delivering on that and then creating a lot of time and freedom so I can be strategic as the leader and go get my part done, which is actually bringing in strategy and bringing in new clients and doing my thing. Okay, so let's talk new clients. First things first, cannot overemphasize, cannot overemphasize niche. I'm gonna um, pull up a little whiteboard here Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm a little casual, just came back from the gym, but wanted to knock out all this stuff for you guys really quick. So let's make sure this comes through straight ahead. Sometimes when you're on Facebook Live, it flips the video around. There's a setting in there. I'm hoping I have that right. So um, let's do this. Niche right here. Is we're gonna we're gonna just make a big smiley face. This is your niche. This is your ideal person. All right. There's no way to overstate how important this is. Everything you do comes from this niche. So down here, if you're gonna run, if you're gonna run any ads, right? If you got a little Facebook ad going on here, if you're gonna run an ad, that comes from your niche. An uninformed ad is an ad that doesn't have a niche and doesn't really understand their niche. If you're gonna have a landing page, a website, whatever you wanna do, it's got a little video on there, and you've got all this copy, and you've got to fill in, whatever you've got. If you're gonna do that, it's gotta be informed by that niche, all right? We're gonna get down deep into this in just a second. If you're gonna do any kind of sales process, if you're a brick and mortar and you got people coming into your shop, if you've got stuff that's going on the phone, if it's a sales process, it's all digital, whatever it is, this right here has to be informed by the niche. If you're in a simple Facebook group, like this one right here, it has to be niche informed niches are everything now I, I get a chance to talk to many of you guys and girls in the group and i know the niche thing is a struggle and some of you who think you have a niche actually do but honestly that's probably like 10 percent of y'all that i talk to i'd say the other 90 percent really you don't have a niche you think you do but you don't or your niche isn't one that can support the, the money, the income, the processes that you want to actually build in your agency, okay? So let's dive into niches a little more. There are several things that make up a good niche, okay? I'm gonna erase this for a sec. Three main qualities that a niche has to have, all right? Just to be real. 
the niche has to be able to pay you, okay? You can go ahead and eliminate a lot of niches you might have on your mind right now. For instance, um, I, I completely struck out four or five years ago. I wanted to launch an online course. And so um, in, in my background, I'm an investment advisor. I've done a lot of startup investing, a lot of early stage seed investing, some second round investing, had a lot of fun doing ventures and, and made good money doing that. The, the thing is, I wanted to build a course and teach people that were starting their own businesses how to get an investor. So I had this course called Get Startup Investors. It was an amazing course. I put so much good content in there. I know that niche super well, but that niche right there cannot afford to buy a course. I was selling to people, duh, who needed money. They didn't have money to figure out how to go get money. They needed money. Yes, they need the information. They need to learn how to sell investors. They need to learn how to do all the stuff they had to do to put together a good deck and understand is their product or service gonna go to market and can they actually pitch that to an investor? Like Shark Tank, think Shark Tank, right? This is basically coaching people on how to go to a Shark Tank investor. That's all TV stuff, but you get the point. If they don't have money, you don't think they have a clear path to cash flow now, then this is not a good niche, okay? You may have a heartbeat for them. You may have a passion for them. You may know what to do to help them. But if they can't pay you, unfortunately, they're not a good niche unless you have a free product that you want to give away and really aren't hoping for them to be able to pay back into your world, okay? Money has to be a big thing, okay? Then your niche has to be motivated, okay? Let's call this motivation. And I'm just gonna make a big forward arrow because these people have to want to move forward, okay? They gotta wanna go, go, go. If this is them, that's a good niche. What I mean by that is a lot of niches are very thoughtful, they, they want to research, and they don't wanna ever take action, okay? They wanna learn, 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 they're tire kickers, and they don't want to move forward. So you need a niche that's motivated. There's a lot of things that motivate people, but an easy way to do this, and you've probably heard this 100 times over, and it's true, because people keep repeating it, it really is true, this has been the case for forever. I love reading old marketing books, by the way, ones that are like from the 1800s, early 1900s, or right when, radio and then right when TV came around, the stuff we're learning today is the same stuff that's always been around. It's just human nature. People are motivated by several things. They're motivated by health. They're motivated by wealth. And hey, you call it happiness, but you can. You call it relationships, happiness, Spirituality, I'm going to call it happy, just for kicks. Could be relationships, could be spirituality, could be um, a connection or healing from their past or a connection to their future or an opportunity to build who they are. Now, health, wealth, and happiness can overlap a lot, right? Some people think that wealth is going to make them happy. Yeah, getting out of poverty can make you significantly happier, but we've all seen the research. Once you hit that line where you've got a decent lifestyle, more wealth doesn't create more happiness. It often creates less happiness. But they may perceive that getting to a, a six-figure income or a seven-figure income or an eight-figure income will make them happy. That's a perception. Call it what you want. They will buy for that reason, but it's really a wealth issue. Target that and know the difference. Health, health makes you happier as well, but getting healthy, getting in shape, eating right, um, getting off of medicines and into a more natural lifestyle or whatever it may be for you or your audience, that's a major key motivator. People who are motivated by health, wealth, or happiness, which is often truly like, let's define that by relationships or spirituality or something that's going on inside your heart and your head besides wealth and health. Those are, um, are happiness indicators. If they're super motivated and those pain points are real, then that's a good motivated market. So we have money, and we have motivation, and they overlap. You have to have a market that has the money to pay and that is motivated. These are the main motivating factors. There's lots of sub things that could be motivating factors. Like for instance, um, I've used this example before. I love Blue, my dog. He's actually laying outside the door right now because he's barking earlier. So he's locked out of the studio. But I love dog training. I've purchased courses and purchased time from trainers and had Blue trained up really, really well. That's 
probably in here a happiness thing for me. It doesn't look like it's health, wealth, or relationships, but it, it creates happiness for me. That was motivating to me. It made me buy, right? Okay, find your niche. Find what motivates them. They have to not be tire kickers or just the analysis of paralysis. They can't get stuck. They have to move forward. So money and motivation, okay? Then here's the next part. This is the hardest part, quite frankly. They have to be easily identifiable, all right? I'm going to put a smiley face here for this. I wish I had a nice M word, money, motivation, and I don't know. And let's put the little emoji with the hour, with like the, the monocle dude, you know that emoji? He's like here, and he's smiling. I think that dude actually has some teeth maybe, I'm not sure. You know what I'm talking about. This guy's, this guy's identifiable. Some of those emojis in your phone or your computer, it's, they're unique, right? They are who they are. Some of the emojis are awesome because they actually show skin color, gender, relationship issues, relationship structures, religious structures. There's emojis for that. That's because people like being identified as who they are. I love that. I'm a person, right? I'm not like you. I'm like me. But the weird thing is that I'm a lot like you in a lot of ways. We're all creative agency owners, right? That's what this group is about. We're all people who are entrepreneurially minded. We want to do our own thing. A lot of us don't like having a boss. A lot of us are kind of crazy brained ADHD. We get distracted by lots of things. Some of us are hyper, hyper focused workaholics, but there's consistent patterns that create an amazing creative agency owner. And we're a lot like that. That's our neighborhood. It's our community. It's our niche, right? Who is your niche? You need to be able to like literally write a couple of paragraphs about your niche. Okay. My agency sent hold, which we service high end surgery groups and dental groups in specialties in rural communities around the nation. That's our primary niche and target physicians and dentists in rural communities that want to serve communities that are typically under about half a million people. That's, that's where we find ourselves. That's great. That's our niche. I know those people inside and out. I know their communities inside and out. I know their pain points. I know the surgeons. I know their staff. I know how they think. That's my world, right? I know how to grow that business. This is my fourth agency. I've had financial agencies. I've had agencies that deal and focus on people in the security industry, like as in alarms and stuff like that. You got to know your niche. Once you know your niche, you can crush it. I'm going to say this again. You need to be able to literally take a Google Doc right now and define this person. Like, I want to be able to read your Google Doc and then look out my window and see some people on the stream like, oh, yeah, that's the niche. That's the person right there. I know that sounds kind of profile-y and creepy, but get that specific. This is, this is not the airport authority. There's nothing wrong with profiling in this format. It's helpful. Once you know them, you can identify what's really going on in their heads, their hearts, their pain points, and you can really deliver a message, a product, a service that meets them exactly where they are right now. You want them to see your ad or your website or a phone call with you or your storefront, whatever your creative agency runs in, and you want them to walk into that space, to click into that space and be like, oh my gosh, like, yeah, that's, that's exactly me. And oh my gosh, wouldn't it be amazing if that solved my problem? That is so important. Now, a lot of folks I talk to have like seven or eight or even two or three niches that they're going after. That's really scary, okay? Until you have a large staff, and even then, thanks, I'm with you there. Until you have a large staff, and even then, you really have to be careful about having more niches than one because it's distracting. And there's something about us as creatives and as visionaries and as strategists that it's hard for us to really nail that down. If we have two, we get distracted when I was good. Nail a niche down and pursue it. Now, a lot of people think, well, if I've got, if I've got this niche right here, right? So I've got this, this person I've clearly defined and they have money and they have health, wealth, and happiness. And here we are. This is such a small piece of the pie, right? There's 8 billion people on the planet and I only get to work with, what's that, 100,000 of them might be in my market? That'd be super cool. If you could find a market that had 100,000 of them. In fact, there's one type of surgeon here in the US and there's, 
I think there was 870 something of them. We did our research. I paid one of my staff to literally research and find all of them in every state, all 50 states. We found them all, 800 and something of them in the United States. And we target marketed them through lots of different means, but that was effective and efficient because we got the message so nailed down. It didn't mean anything to anybody. There was no other medical professional on the planet that it meant anything to except 870 something people. And they got the message and they called the phone number and they made it happen because we knew what they needed and they knew we needed it and they knew we knew it. And then they go to their conventions. They go to, you know, all of our clients have these conventions they go to where all the latest, greatest things are. It's tons of people trying to sell to your market. But if you've niched and then re-niched and then re-niched in that market even more and more and more, then you're going to find the people that are so specific, that have such a specific set of needs, that use a specific language, keywords, terminology, industry jargon. Those things are going to be really, really nailed down and dialed in. And your email to them, your website to them, your ad to them, your picture, your video, whatever you put together is going to get super, super tight. And they're going to know you are their expert. There are very few people who are willing to be an expert for their niche. And when you get there, you'll own that market. Um, yes, um, Joseph, yes, there will be a replay. This is live, so just jump back in to the, um, to the I'll, in fact, I'll shoot you back a message later. If you can't catch all of this, it's no worries. Just jump back into the Facebook group. It'll be here. I won't delete it, don't worry. So that's important. A lot of people still think though, but but there's also you know there's this guy right here in my niche but you know there's somebody out here and they're they're almost like it i mean look at them they, they have a monocle and they have one eye without a monocle and they have a smiley face but they don't have those cool little teeth that that emoji has well they're not your niche right it's no big deal i promise you there's enough fish in the sea and you might say oh but you know there's already this big you know huge marketing company over here that's just crushing my niche, right? They own my niche. Everybody knows who they are. So, so I hear this. In fact, ClickFunnels comes up a lot, all right? We all know who ClickFunnels are. It's our industry, right? ClickFunnels, lead pages, kind of point and click drag people that, that help you with the software that helps you generate um, and make a funnel for your website, whatever. ClickFunnels is fantastic, right? I've used it. I think we're using it now with some of our clients and some of our projects. But ClickFunnels is not the end-all be-all. If you're a WordPress designer, you can make the same thing happen in WordPress that you can on ClickFunnels. And I don't want to get in the long discussion about which one's better, lead pages, ClickFunnels, or WordPress, whatever, because it doesn't matter. What matters is you know your niche. And if your niche wants to follow a process along and hear and learn the way they want to learn, and you can create that and you're a WordPress designer in WordPress, Go for it. Know your niche, know your service, and execute and deliver. That's good work. So we're talking about getting new clients here. Once you know your niche, don't worry about the competition. Crush it. Get in there. Be personal. Be real. Be honest. And go after that niche. But you're going to be able to communicate to that niche in a way that nobody else can. So I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds here because this gets really down there quick. But when it comes to communicating, we all know that there's Facebook ads, right? Some of you in this group are amazing Facebook ad experts. We know there's different kinds of sites. There's landing pages. Let's just say funnels. Technically, all of this is part of a good funnel, but you know some of the brands have have created a thought that their, that their landing page style is a funnel, but all of this is part of a funnel. There's video, there's um, Instagram. I like the Instagram logo, isn't it, isn't it fun? That little, little camera thing. There's all these different things. There's LinkedIn. Let's see, I'll just put in there. You can't see it anyway. All these different places we can market, we can get good at, we can run, um, bots, we can run messages, we can do Facebook groups, we can be constantly posting on our personal feeds, we can do video, we can have a YouTube channel, we can have an Instagram channel, we can do ads to all of those locations, we can be SEOing our brains out on our websites, there's so much you can do. Email lists, on and on it goes. 
you got to pick your niche like we just talked about. And then you need to pick one, maybe two. Again, this is like niching down. One is better. If you picked one thing, hey, thanks, man. If you picked one thing right here, that would be the way to go. Niching into one specific niche like we just went through and then picking one thing to do here is really, really important. Find out where your niche is. Your niche is going to help you identify the right place to put your message out there and the right place to, to be an ambassador for your cause and their cause. You're becoming an ambassador for their cause. You know them, their pain points, their needs, their wants. You are their person. If you know your niche well, you actually really know where they're hanging out. You know if they're Facebook people, if they're group people, if they're YouTubers, right? So the folks in our, in our community are, are videographers, right? They're producing amazing video content. A couple of guys in our group are videographers specifically for real estate agents. Amazing. They have awesome YouTube content, way better video content than I can ever create. They're going to run circles around me on YouTube because I'm not a video creation guy. I outsource all my video work. They should be thinking about YouTube, right? Except that their, their market, their niche are real estate agents. If real estate agents aren't YouTube watching fiends and that's not where they find their real estate agent info app, then these guys and girls have to get off YouTube and they might have to go to Facebook or might have to go to Instagram or might have to go to some email news list or, or whatever you need to do. But you got to go where your people are. You got to communicate the way they communicate. If your market's like 65 years old or above, you're probably not going to find as many of them on Instagram as you are on Facebook, right? If your market's 22, you're not going to find that many of them on Facebook like you're going to find on Instagram. It's just a numbers game. You got to know your people and you got to know where they're hanging out. So, um, <laughs> got your comment there, David. Yes. <laughs> yep. Saves me $79 a month. I assume you're saving for not buying ClickFunnels. Again, I love ClickFunnels. Um, nothing knocking ClickFunnels. It's an amazing product. But yes, um, it's not the only thing out there. Neither is lead pages. Neither is WordPress. Neither is Facebook. Neither is Instagram ads. You got to know the way you and your group, your niche communicate. When you figure that out, all of this becomes much, much clearer and cleaner. Then you have to pick one. Become an expert at the place that your community hangs out and communicates in. That is how you're going to reach most efficiently and most effectively your niche. Okay. I'm not going to get into ad copy and what should be in your video and how you're going to attract and sales processes and closing. We, we can do all that. We can teach all that. The point is today's video is meant to be short. I don't want to keep you here forever. It's, um, it's been 23 minutes already. The niche informs what's in the video. The niche informs your ad copy. The niche informs what day you send your emails on. The niche informs the colors in your logo and on your branding. The niche, the niche, the niche. I want a message that clearly reaches for me and my agency. Right now, the one that, that really focuses on surgeon, dentist, and specialties in, in small communities. I want to focus on only what communicates to them. All right. And I know what communicates to them. And I know it communicates to their patients. So we have two groups that we really nip down on and track there because our client needs us to understand their niche. So you have to take that same practice and do it for your client as well. That's another really big reason that niching is so, so important is when your client becomes very niched and you have 50 or 100 of them or three of them, however many you want to have in your agency. You don't want to have to go and recreate the entire process learning skill, all that you have to do to go and work for them because you're going to be communicating to their niche. As a creative agency owner, chances are you're reaching out to their people and you got to make sure that you know their niche. And if you have to relearn that and redo niche studies every time for every client, that gets really time consuming, makes your agency very inefficient, makes it costly for you to do the project, brings your, your profit margins down, and it means your, um, your clientele is not going to be as happy and as efficiently dealt with and nailing it every single time. That is it for today. Any questions that pop up, I will answer them right now. I appreciate your comments so far. I think I've answered everything there. And I think I've answered the questions I got previously in comments. I try to make sure I wove those into here. So if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and pop them in there while I'm erasing the board. If nothing shows up, we'll be out of here. And you guys can get to your awesome weekend, whatever you have planned. 
and you can go think about niches, right? Okay, anything there? Thank y'all for hanging out with me today. Thanks for letting me be casual. No collar, just chilling and relaxing. I think we are good. I don't see any questions popping up. All right, my friends. I am gonna check out of here real quick. I'm just checking the uh, the live Facebook feed real quick just to make sure that I'm not missing anything. And if you want me to do a live for you guys, uh, if, you, if you have anything in particular, um, great. I think we're caught up. Um, if you have anything particular that you want me to hit on a Facebook live training, then just let me know when. And if you send me a, a direct question, I kind of collect those and I pull them together. And I try to make sure we can compile those. And then if you even have a, hey, it'd be awesome if you could do the Facebook Live at 8 o'clock on a Thursday morning or something that fits better for you, no worries at all. Let me know. I'll do my best to, uh, to fit that in and make it up for you. Okay, I'm out of here. Y'all are awesome. See you next time.